All right, so this is problem 1439, it's on page 952. A 15 pound block starts from rest and slides on the 25 pound wedge A, which is supported by a horizontal surface. Neglecting friction, determine A, the velocity of B relative to A after it has slid three foot down the inclined surface of the wedge, and B, the corresponding velocity of block A. Let me sketch the system so you can see what we're looking at. So we've got block B here. Sitting on a wedge, the wedge is called A. There is a 30 degree angle of the wedge. The weight of block A is 25 pounds and the weight of B, 15 pounds. Now, one of the things I read that I skipped over, uh, or didn't write down, the block A slides three foot down. So basically block, I'm sorry, block B slides three foot down. So what we're going to do, if we draw the block again, you'll see why I'm drawing it again here in a moment. The block is going to move from here down to here, where this distance is three foot relative to, to block A, see? So that's what I will call D. However, I'm also going to make this uh, some, so how can I explain this? I'm going to basically set up an equation in pictures, if you will, where the initial momentum plus the impulses cause the final momentum. Does that make sense? In other words, there are impulses that are going to act that will change the momentum of these two bodies. But one of them might be, I don't know, maybe this normal force. Well, normal force is just a force. I would actually have to multiply it by however much time it takes the block to slide down. So basically, this is now an impulse, isn't it? Because this, this normal force would be constant. However much time it takes, I don't really care. I'm just trying to draw a bunch of momenta. What other uh, force would act? Well, there would also be the weight of B and as well the weight of A. And you might say, well, okay, all that's well and good, and I understand there's no friction, but there's going to be a normal force between A and B and an equal and opposite between B and A. Here's the beauty of this approach. We don't care. Those two forces are internal forces. And really, I don't just want forces. I want impulses. So I'm multiplying by time, you see? All I'm trying to capture here are all of the external impulses, okay? not the internal ones. But what that will do is cause a change where now the two blocks will have, well, let me try to make that a little more consistent. The two blocks will have some momentum. So MA, VA, and block B. Yes, it'll be down the incline. I'm going to draw this in a kind of an odd way. I'm going to draw it this way mass of block B times the velocity of A, you'll see why I'm doing this here in just a second, and a relative momentum, mass of block B times the relative velocity of B with respect to A. These two together are the momentum of block B. Why would I draw it this way? Well, it's because I'm interested in a relative velocity. And so I was trying to work that into the problem. Now, if you think about this, it'll make sense. In fact, I'm going to need a triangle for this here in just a second. Let me, let me just draw it for the time being, and then you'll see how this works. So, if I were to add these two momenta together, okay, what would I get? I would get... Uh, let's see, is that what I want? Uh, let me think for just a second. I want to draw a triangle, not this one. Let me, let me change this. We need these uh, head and tail. Here we go, that's what's wrong. You, you realize that... Yeah, there we go. I was drawing it. M, B... Velocity B with respect to A, I should have put them head to tail. 
you realize that these two vectors together represent the two components of momentum for block B. And so really, block B's momentum is like this. Now that should make a lot of sense. Block B's momentum is more straight down than the angle of the incline. Does that make sense? Because, I mean, it kind of makes sense. If block A is sliding out of the way, then not only is block B possibly moving down this way, it's also moving down. So it's got more of a, a slanted direction relative to a fixed coordinate system. So it makes sense to, to break them up this way. And why would I do that? Well, it's because in my momentum equation, this will be easier to deal with and it'll give me that relative velocity. Okay. Speaking of momentum, really our equation says if I add up all of the momentum of all the bodies and all the external forces that act over time, I will get a new momentum of the system. Now how many equations is this really? It's two equations, right? There's an x equation and a y equation. Now if I write down the y equation, I'm going to have a whole bunch of impulses in the vertical direction. Did you know something nice here? There are no impulses in the horizontal direction, is there? So what that means is that for the x direction, if I were to set up, you know, just a regular x, y coordinate system, if I were to look at the x component of this equation, I could say that all of the x momenta plus all of the, and really there should be a summation in here too because there might be multiple forces, all of the impulses in the x direction, so no longer a, a vector, <coughs> equals all of the, and this would be state one, this would be state two, all of the x direction, uh, should be one, sorry. All the x direction momentum afterward. But wait a second, there are no x direction forces that act as a whole because any x direction forces on block B are equal and opposite to those on block A. So, there is no impulse in the horizontal direction. Oh, by the way, the system starts from rest. It almost looks like we've got something very uninteresting, which says that there's no momentum in the horizontal direction. Well, that's true. It's sitting still, but wait a second. That also means that these blocks have to move in such a way that there's no total momentum in the horizontal direction. So what that means then is that zero, the left-hand side over here, equals all of the momentum in the horizontal direction. So that would be the mass of B times the velocity uh, of A. Uh, let me reorder this. Mass of A. I don't know why I wrote that one first. Mass of A, velocity of A, so that's the momentum of block A, plus mass of B, velocity of A, because remember, I broke up the momentum of this body into two parts. Minus the mass of B times the velocity of B with respect to A, but notice this vector's angled down, right? So I just want the horizontal component of it, like that, and that's a 30 degree angle in there. So I need to use the cosine of the angle theta, which is 30 degrees. Does that make sense? So really, again, the only reason for breaking this up into two parts, not just writing MBVB, the only reason for breaking it up is so I can get that relative velocity in there, because that's something I asked for. Okay. Now I can rearrange this equation. Let's see, I'm going to need more space than I have, but that's okay. So I can rearrange this equation to solve for the velocity of A itself. Okay. So I'm going for this uh, velocity of A right here. You see what I would do is take this to the other side. I'd write mass of B, velocity of B with respect to A, cosine theta divided by, I'd factor out MA and B off of VA and move it to the other side, so MA plus MB, or the sum of the masses. Okay. So I've written the velocity of block A in terms of the relative velocity between blocks B and A. This is the first equation. This is my horizontal uh, conservation of momentum equation. However, I can also consider what's going on with this triangle. I can study motion, so to speak, because if you think about it, Really, what I've done here is made it so that I can actually solve the velocity. It's fairly complicated to think about how this block slides down the incline while block A is moving to the right, so it also has to move down a little bit. 
And by breaking it up this way, we've got a nice result. Because think about it, the direction of this velocity, B with respect to A, has to simply be down the incline. That gives me an angle here. That angle is theta, right? So I can set up a relationship between, now let's look at this. If I were to draw this not with momentum, but with velocities, it'd be the same thing, wouldn't it? So I can set, this is just a triangle, and I can use the law of cosines to relate the velocities about that triangle. In fact, let's call this down here equation one. Okay. I think that's what I called it. Yeah, I called that one. And then, if we set up the law of cosines for this, well, how would that go? Well, the length of the side is just VB with respect to A, isn't it? But it's this side that I know the angle of. So I have to write, how does the law of cosines go? Uh, C squared equals B squared plus A squared uh, minus 2AB cos theta, right? When we have theta, the angle, we have to have the side opposite it. So since theta is here, then apparently VB is this side. It's what we call C in this equation. And then you can apply A and B as you like. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So basically, the C side is VB squared equals the B side. I'll call that VB with respect to A squared plus, let's see, is that what I did before? Yes. Plus the A side, VA squared. I had them in opposite orders, but that's okay. Minus 2, A is VA. B is VB with respect to A cos theta. Of course, theta is 30 degrees, but I get tired of writing 30 degrees. Now, notice this relates VA, VB, and VB with respect to A. So I only have three unknowns in this equation, and I've got two down here. The only thing I need is one more equation that involves VA, VB, VB with respect to A prime, you know, whatever. I need one more equation to relate those velocities together. So far, what have I used? I've used kinematics, studying motion. I've used conservation of momentum. What was the other equation we said we'd use a lot? Conservation of energy. There's no friction here. They told us that. Since there's no friction, there are no lossy forces. So we could use conservation of energy. The nice thing about conservation of energy is directionality doesn't matter. None of this matters. We can write down a scalar equation for conservation of energy that will simply be true. And that goes like this. The initial kinetic energy plus all the work of all the external forces that act from 1 to 2 equals the kinetic energy in step 2. Now, are there any forces, I know I've just erased the impulses, but are there any forces that get to act through a distance? Remember, there are three different impulses I wrote down. There was the normal force times time. Does that move through a distance? L let me sketch that one more time. There's B, there's A. Remember, this was that center figure where B slid down the incline. There was a normal force times time. There was weight of B times time. And there was also weight of A times time. Okay. Does this force get to move through a distance? Nope. So that one doesn't do any work. How about this force? Does it get to move through a distance? Nope. The only force that gets to move through a distance is that one. So the system begins with no kinetic energy. And the only force that gets to act through a distance is the weight pulling the block down. So we can simply write negative weight of B times delta Y of, of the block B, however far down it moves. How far down does it move? Well, that's related to distance D, isn't it? We know the angle theta is 30 degrees. So if I extract that triangle, there's D. There's our 30 degree angle. This side's delta Y, isn't it? Well, it's negative of delta Y, but you get the idea. So that side, delta y, now remember, delta y is going to have to be a negative thing because it's moving down. So I'm just going to tack on a negative sign. It would be d sine theta, wouldn't it? Because this side is the sine side. So delta y is just negative d sine theta. And that would be equal to the kinetic energy after the thing's in motion. What is the kinetic energy? Well, 1 half mass of a velocity of a squared plus one half mass of b, plus two b squared. And that's it. All right? Any questions so far? So what we've got now is an equation 
appealing to conservation of energy that involves VA and VB as the only two unknowns. Okay. All right, so uh, this is my first equation. This kinematics equation is the second. This conservation of energy equation is the third equation. And so now we've got to solve them all, which is going to be quite a mess. Okay, so let me do this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of everything else on the board except for the three equations that we want to solve. Now it's just an algebra problem. Would it be easier to use Excel? To use Excel? I absolutely agree, and that's what we're going to do. But before we jump over to Excel, well, quite frankly, I'm not sure how to solve three equations and three unknowns in Excel. But I can set it up where I put them together, get a fairly complicated equation and not actually have to solve for the, the unknown variable by itself. So that's, that was my plan. That's what I was doing uh, in my office earlier. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take equation three and rearrange it. I'm going to solve for the velocity of b. All right, so how about if we pull everything to the other side? So the negatives will cancel. We'll have weight of, well, capital B, weight of capital B, d sine theta, that's this side minus one-half mass of A, velocity of A squared equals, we're going to have one-half mass of B, velocity of B squared, but I want velocity of B squared by itself, so I'm just going to divide by one-half mass of B, and that would then be velocity of B squared. Okay. Notice I can take this and I can plug it in here to equation two. I can also just square this equation and plug it in here where I need it, or not square it and plug it in there, you see? So let's write out the whole thing and then we'll solve it in Excel. So let's see, let's take this and expand it. So we want velocity b squared, well that can be written as, um, we'll make some simplifications. Notice the weight of b is the mass of b times g. So this first term, you'd invert and multiply, and you'd have 2g, because the two masses would cancel here d sine theta, that's our first term, minus one half, well the one halves would cancel, so we have minus mass of A over mass of B. I tried to write an M and a B at the same time, didn't work very well. Times the velocity of A squared, but the velocity of, uh, yeah, but the velocity of A squared can be written this way, so let's get rid of velocity of A squared, and let's write this. Mass of B over mass of A plus mass of B times the velocity of B with respect to A cos theta squared. Okay? So I didn't want to write velocity of A squared. I'm trying to get rid of velocity of A and velocity of B and just have the relative velocity since that's what they asked me to solve for. So do you see how I have finished, uh, let's see, what have I finished? I've written the velocity of b squared for this left-hand side in terms of the velocity of b with respect to a. So now I'll write the right-hand side. I need velocity of b with respect to a, so I'll just leave it. Plus velocity of a squared, well, that's the same as this thing, right? If I wanted to, since I've got the velocity of a as a plus velocity of a, I could subtract it over here. If I subtract it over here, that would be equivalent Say mass of A over mass of B plus 1. What did I just do? I had the velocity of A on this side. Basically, I subtracted, well, the velocity of A squared. I subtracted the velocity of A squared from this side. So since this is already the velocity of A squared here, I just pulled the 1 over there and added it to mass of A plus mass of B. Okay? Any questions about that? It's just algebra so far. So that takes care of all of these terms. The last term I have is, well, it's actually minus 2 VA, but I don't want VA. So I'm going to write this without the square, of course. The mass of B over mass of A plus mass of B multiplied by velocity of B with respect to A cos theta. And I think that takes care of VA. And then I need to multiply that since that's the velocity of A, times the velocity of B with respect to A cos theta. And then I can get rid of this equation. So now this big, long, complicated equation really is just a kinematics equation with conservation of energy thrown in on this side and conservation of momentum 
replacing the velocity of A. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is go over to Excel because quite frankly I don't feel like solving. Would it be easy to solve for? It might be. You can see me wondering if I should do it. Now yeah, we'll just solve it in Excel. It wouldn't be too bad. You would square this term, you get VBA by itself. This term you get two VBAs. So you could solve for VBA. And it's not a quadratic. I was saying it would end up being quadratic, but it's not. You will have to take a square root at the end. <coughs> but it's easy enough to just throw this into Excel. It'll run. Not what I was doing hand. You know what tool I'm going to use, don't you? Gold seat. You better believe it. So all we're going to do for the sake of the camera and anyone watching, I guess those that's the reward for those who didn't show up today. They don't get to see the Excel spreadsheet either. <laughs> all I'm going to do is plug in all of these parameters. For example, that is 30 degrees, G is, well, what are we in? Metric or English? I think we're in English, aren't we? Yeah, because it slides three feet down. So G will be 32.2 feet per second squared. D is three feet. Masses are going to be in pounds mass. Notice these are ratios. So how much mass does a 15 pound force block have? If gravity's pulled, pulling down on something with 15 pounds force, 15 pound mass, that's it. So it's easy to figure out the amount of mass for body A and body B. And then the unknown will be the velocity B with respect to A, but we'll just guess and check on that one. Okay? So this shouldn't be too bad. It's just a matter of setting it up. So D, the distance is uh, 3 foot. Theta, I don't feel like going in and changing to a symbol, is 30 degrees. Excel prefers radians, so I'll convert that to radians. Yeah, easy way, radians of that number of degrees. That's radians. What other variable G? 32.2 feet per second squared. And is that it? No, mass of A, mass of B. Mass of A, mass of B. Mass of it, which one was the bigger one? A. A. 25, 25 pound mass and 15 pound mass for B. <coughs> okay. I think that's everything that goes into the equation. So let's just set up a left hand side and a right hand side. Take the difference between them once we guess VB with respect to A. Oh, I need a place for VB with respect to A. No. I'll take a guess. What do you want to guess? How about two feet per second? Sound good? Why not? All right, so left-hand side of the equation and right-hand side. And then, of course, the error will be the difference between those two. So left-hand side, less, less right-hand side. Left-hand side of the equation, I know it starts with 2 times g times d. Is it times sine theta? Sine theta. Yeah. All right, so we grab theta and radians. Minus. Or minus. Okay, minus. Mass of A. We need quantity, mass of A over mass of B, or is it the other way around? It's the A over B. A over B. Okay, uh, plus one. Plus one. Plus one. And that needs to be multiplied by something else, and that something else is squared. So let me set up that form first. I think that's everything on the left-hand side. Uh -huh. Looks good. So let's see, we have the mass of B over the sum. Over the sum. Yeah, you want parentheses again. Yeah, I'll just put parentheses at the same time. Yeah, A plus N. And then I need to multiply by, in other words, remember how Excel works. Uh -huh. This next thing will be in the numerator. I'm not multiplying this denominator. I'm multiplying B6 by this. I need to multiply by the guess times cos theta. So the guess times cos of, notice I do, I put down an open and close parenthesis at the same time. There so there's, there it is. The right hand side of the equation, you know what, I should have set up a cell for the velocity of A, then I wouldn't have to type that again. That's all right. I'll grab it in a second. So I need VB with respect to A squared. 
and then I need, I need to subtract off two times something. Let me pause here. Show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I know that in this expression somewhere is the velocity of a. It's everything that's inside this square, right? That's the velocity of a. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it over so I don't have to copy it again. It's just not square at all. Correct. It's not square. So I will copy that out. And go back to the right hand side. I need to multiply by the velocity of a. There we go. We're just done. Okay. Velocity of a times the guess times cos theta. So times the guess times cos of theta. Well, we got a little bit of error, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Two is not right. Let's find out what is right. Three. <laughs> Could be. Huh? What if analysis goal C? 16. We want to set the error to zero. We should place a bet on it. 16 is what I said. 1.6. 17. <laughs> Write down your guess and let's see what happens. Oh, oops. 15.5. What is it? It does contain a value. Did you do the top one? Yeah, I told it. So we've just found from Excel then that the velocity of B with respect to A is about 11.5, what have we got? 11.6 feet per second. And remember, our that's once it reaches the 3 foot, that's right. It's not that high. In fact, it's increasing as it goes down the incline. Yep. But that's not the only thing they wanted us to find. Of course, we've got the actual number in Excel. They want us to find something else. They wanted us to find the corresponding velocity of A. Well, fortunately, I copied this out just a second ago. I didn't plan that ahead. We just got lucky. I know where it's at, so I can have Excel compute that too. Well, let's go do that. All right. I think it was, what, this piece over here? The mass P over mass A. Oh, yeah. yeah, just this bit in here, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll just copy that out. And say then that the velocity of A is equal to all that. Could we also get the velocity of B? Sure. Yes. We have an expression for it right here. We just need to take the square root of this side. Now let me rewrite this one more time. VB would be the square root of all of this. Remember, I simplified it by taking these two and canceling and write, wrote 2 uh, g d sine theta minus the halves cancel m a over m b v a squared. Now that I've got v a in the spreadsheet, I can calculate with it. They didn't ask for it, but I think it's interesting. So we want a quantity to the half power. In other words, we're going to take the square root of. 2 times g times d times the sine, yeah. the sine of the we'll close parentheses so don't make dumb parentheses mistakes. That's the first term minus ma over md. Times va squared. Va of course, that's also feet per second. 8.54 feet per second or so for the velocity of B. Yeah, 
I write it on the board and have it over here myself. Okay. Now, let's see. Yeah, let's talk about that. That would be something good to discuss. So, is the momentum still zero? Well, remember that this VA is moving to the right and this VB is moving to the left. So they have opposite momentum directions, right? So effectively, the momentum from this motion of A would be velocity of A times mass of A. And the momentum of B would be velocity of B times the mass of B. I think we've done something wrong because I didn't get the same number. Before. Well, isn't VB? Oh, you're right. Down. You're right. Maybe I forgot there's a component here going down. You're right. You're right. So I need to get just the. That's going to be a pain. I don't feel like doing that. We could. <laughs> so here's what I've done I've made the mistake of using VB. You're right. But remember that triangle I had. Uh, VB with respect to A is like that. Uh, and this was VA. If I took the horizontal component, actually that wouldn't be too bad. Well, yeah, I would because I'd have to try. I'd have to find that angle. I know this is 30 degrees. I'm not sure what that one is. So I'd have to work with law of sines or cosines or something. I don't feel like doing that. But I would get just the v b x component, right, and use that multiplied by the mass of b, and then that should come out. I might double check my numbers because I haven't solved this completely yet until now uh, to make sure that the numbers we've Arrived at are correct, but I think we're I think we're okay. we're doing good. Um, speaking of which, momentum there must be some momentum in the vertical direction, right? Because because there's certainly v b y. Why is there some momentum in the vertical direction? I thought impulse that that's right. right. There's a mo an impulse on B that's not on A, right? There was that the weight of B that's acting on it to pull it down. That's right. Good job. Any questions? All right. Thank you, guys.